Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Fiona and I am a full-time artist. And on this channel, I'd like to take you with me on my artistic journey, whether that means leaving the studio to go see cool art exhibits, working on projects in studio, or doing things that we are going to do today, which is playing with art supplies. So about two weeks ago, I made an art haul video where I had gone to Blick and spent a $100 gift card and shared with you what I got. And I got a few comments where you expressed that you were interested to see what did these things actually look like in use. So I thought I would take a video of playing with these supplies and share it with you and see what you guys think. So here are all the supplies still in the bag two weeks later, and we are going to unbox them and try them out and see what we think. So let's do it. I got six of them because they were having a deal on that. So that's, let's try it out. Just going to have some fun in the sketchbook with them. Oh, so smooth. Feels so good to work with. So crisp. Like the nib is so thin and good. I love it. There you go. Fine point for love. I like this blue color too. It's like a cyan color. So something that does get to me when I do have a sketchbook and pens is when it bleeds, but you guys can see it's like super crispy, which I love. Just the, the smoothness of the paper and the quality of the pen, it's not causing that bleeding. Usually if you have more texture in the paper, you would get that. So that's another reason I really like the moleskins because it prevents that bleeding from happening. Okay, we're just about finished here with my cyan color and we are going to try some of the other colors. We'll go green next. Mm -hmm. 
And we'll just add to this one because why not? Oh, it's a lighter green than what I thought it would be, actually. I thought it would be a little darker, but I like it. It kind of has the same saturation point as this blue one. In fact, it's almost a little bit of a neon green in person. I don't think the, cam the camera's picking it up a little bit darker, but it's definitely a lighter green in person here. Very cool. I'm into it. As people honk. All right, let's go pink. You know, I love pink. And these are all, this, these are all the same fine point. So I think they just had all of those same ones when I was shopping. They didn't really mix it up too much. Oh, I love this pink. It's that what we call millennial pink, I guess. I enjoy it very much. Comment your favorite color down below. How basic is that? But we love it. <laughs> I feel like your favorite color also says so much about who you are. Yeah. Oh, I miss working with Stevios. They're so much fun. They're really great as a sketchbook pen. Like, I love it. So easy to travel with too. If you have a little pen case you could take with you, a little moleskin. This is like inspiring me to spend my summer out wandering around and just sketching out in the wild. Even though I tend to work abstract, even in my sketchbooks, I still like to take my sketchbook with me and work outdoors anyway. You do get that awkward moment with people though, where they say, oh, what are you sketching? Let me see. And you're like, mm, nothing from life. <laughs> it's all good though. Anything to share your art with other people. You feel me? I like this yellow too. Yeah, I kind of picked a combination where they're all kind of in the same world. Here we go. We finally have a darker blue and what looks like sort of a light lavender color coming up. Let's see how this fits in. As you can see, I already have paint on my hands from what I was just working on before filming this video. That is a life of an artist. Oh, I like this blue. It's actually kind of almost purpley in person. You see how the camera's picking it up? Yeah, there's a little bit of that purple hint to it. I don't know if you guys have this problem that I do, but sometimes I put too much pressure on it and with pens like this, I'll flatten it. So it doesn't end up being as thin anymore. Like the nib becomes wider because I put too much pressure on it. Just something to watch out for if you're like me and you have a heavy hand. All right. Last one. This color, I'm actually interested to see what this looks like. Let's see. And then I just throw that on the end. Easy peasy. Let's actually go down. Well, my balance is a little off here. Oh, oh. Good. What? Wait, what? What color is this? Looks like neon blue. That doesn't, does that look like that? Not at all. It looks closer to this actually, just like if the pen had been running out. That's interesting. Let's keep trying it. 
I think this is why in the store they always have that little piece of paper for you to try pens out because you know you look at the cap and you expect something but I can say I wasn't expecting this. I don't know. What do you guys think? Am I tripping? Does this look close? I don't know. Either way, always a joy to work with. I'm looking now. That doesn't look like that. But I like it as like a gray actually, like a blue gray-ish color. That was fun. All right, on to the next. So next I am going to compare these two watercolor pads, both by Canson and see if I can see a difference. I also have this Pigma brush pen that I had bought and we'll try this out on them and see if I feel a difference. Let's do it. So this is what the brush pen looks like. For anyone curious, let's do it. So obviously when I start working with these things, as I said before with uh, the Stebulo, it has a very fine tip, but the more pressure I put on it, it'll probably fray out. But if I put barely anything, it's very, very, very fine. But then almost like a calligraphy pen, you can uh, make thicker lines if you so feel. So with cold press, you do get more texture than you do with a hot press pad, but there's still a smooth enough quality. I'm not getting any bleeding here, which is great. You know, shout out to anyone who likes that in their work. I get it. I just like to work very graphic and prefer not too much bleeding. I like, it. I like playing with the contrast. In regards to the color too, what an orange, am I right? It is popping. That's probably enough to get a good test in. Now let's switch it for, well, actually maybe I'll leave this open for now. Let's switch it for this watercolor pad. Visibly, it looks like you can see there's just more texture here. First impressions is physically drawing on it. I'm not feeling too much of a difference. There's definitely more resistance against the brush because of the texture, which could be good. Still looking very crispy. I actually thought maybe it would bleed a little bit, but that's not happening.
Uh, now I can see as I work on it, the ink's definitely getting absorbed into the paper more, whereas it sits a little more on the top with this one. It's interesting. at this see how much I feel like I'm already starting to fray that nib from how aggressive I am leaning on the pen okay I think we can do a little comparison now so I would say Maybe the camera's not picking it up great, but this is really holding that orange color a bit better. Here it feels a little lighter, a little more surface, but if I had to be honest working on them, I'm not noticing too much of a difference, at least with this specific pen, but let me know what you guys think. Do you think there's a huge difference? So I think next I'm going to use my paints and do a little comparison with these two and the Liquitex. And I think we'll just continue on these pieces of paper just since this is all an experiment at this point. So we'll get to use some of these and we'll also give each of these brushes a shot and see what they look like. Let's do it. Okay, so I think we are going to try our thinnest brush first which is the number one round. And I'm going to use my basic acrylics. I'm familiar with these, so I know what to expect, but I will show you guys. So just open that up. You can see it's pretty, pretty much just a bright, bright pink. Take some here off the top and oh yeah, you can get a good thin line with this. So I think I had spoke in a previous video about how it's kind of gummy. And I think what I meant was I like to do this when I'm making dots. I like to clump it on here and then see if you can get sort of a fine tip to make dots. I 
those are up to show you guys. The biggest difference is the grip. This feels like it's very much sitting on the surface as opposed to really being absorbed by the paper. for that. So let's switch to one of our bigger brushes. Maybe not this guy. Let's do one of the flat ones. So this is the half angle shader. this one it'll be the same texture but just to show you guys what the color kind of looks like as you can see it is definitely not heavy bodied and then trying out this brush which is a three-fourth wash guy. So this is a heavy body one, so I'm expecting it to feel a little different. I would say right away you can see how that pigment is holding compared to say this one. 
despite me going over it multiple times. Interesting. Okay, I actually want to try this one on this paper. And I think we have a couple more brushes to try, so. Our next brush is the six round. And seeing if I could just pick some up off of here. Not really, that's not working very well, guys. Oh, actually, so just put that paint on and you can see. See that paper starting to warp? same test on this guy see if that happens now I'm having fun with this I didn't really go into this with a big plan but now I'm interested so let's do it first let's try this brush out just because I'm interested ooh thin yeah I like it okay put that brush aside here is our pink brush that we were using. So let's put a bunch of that on here. I guess keeping in mind, these are not mixed media papers. These are watercolor papers. So let's not judge them too harshly. That's about Fish this in here. Oh, yep. You can see it's starting to happen here too. Not as much, but It is enough, it is enough to warp the paper. It was, it is quite a bit for the size of the paper in all fairness. And then lastly, our blue. okay though as I said they're watercolor paper and not meant to be mixed media paper but what do you guys think oh we forgot we have one last brush so our last brush is the two liner and I'm probably gonna get complaints from people saying you're not using the brushes for what you're meant to be using it for but that's all good I'm just having fun here and I hope you're having fun watching. So next, I'm gonna try out my little tool here, but I need some clay, so I'm going to grab that now and take this sticker off.
Hmm. I'm being honest, not as consistent as I would have liked it to be, but it could just be that I'm still getting used to the tool. Let's try it again. Maybe I need to just get it started with my hand. Let's see. ridges in it. They go fast. Hmm. Still lines in it. Mm -mm. Let's see how this looks. pretty well actually. to the next. Okay, the moment many of you have been waiting for, our last item is this liquid gold metallic paint. Um, there's a lot of warnings on this thing. <laughs> so I think I need to read the directions first. But it says, extremely flammable, may cause eye skin Respiratory tract irritation, vapors harmful. I'm a little scared to try this out. Before using, carefully read cautions everywhere else on label. Okay. Harmful, fatal if swallowed, vapors harmful. Call a physician immediately, avoid flames, sparks, skin, and eye contact. When using, do not eat, drink, or smoke. Guys. Mm. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Should I try this? I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared to try this. Uh... Hmm, I'm a little scared. All right, we're gonna do it though. I'm just gonna give it a little shake and open it. Um, I'm reading the label thoroughly here. Well, I guess I need to say this on YouTube as a warning. Uh, make sure that you read this label like I am currently doing. Oh my gosh. Let's talk about if you get it on your skin or your hair. I feel like I need gloves maybe to work with this. Let me go find some gloves. Okay, we are back with gloves. <laughs> so normally I would wear a mask with this sort of thing, but I'm just gonna open it real quick just to see. I mean, look. I've, I've painted several rooms in the house. I've used spray cans before. Like, I get the whole fume thing. You just don't want a lot of exposure. I feel like this is just becoming a really long video on warnings against using this. <laughs> but let's give it a little shake. Because the person, the store manager that recommended this to me did say that it can settle real quick. So you do have to keep shaking it. All right, here we go. Let's see. What she looks like, ooh, real, real golden. Whoa, okay. Yeah, okay. 
That's a lot, y'all. Woo, okay. <laughs> We're gonna take a minute here and open a window. <laughs> We're gonna... Okay, this stuff straight up smells like spray paint. So we are not gonna use it very quick. I now am wearing a mask to lessen the effects of the fumes. But anyway, let's, let's get some of this on some material here so we can actually see what it looks like. I don't even know what brush to use with this thing. Oof, the smell guys. It's a lot. Wow, oof, I have to cover that. Even with a mask on, that is, oof. But the gold itself, Very much like a brushed gold. It's pretty. It's pretty. Now, is it worth the death that my respiratory system is feeling? Not sure. Not sure. Let's try it on some of the black paper. Try and get up closer this time. I am just like trying to work with this stuff as quickly as possible because it is, it is, it is not a joy to work with. We'll say that. All right, here we go. We're gonna get a lot on the brush this time. All right, then. let's go, folks. Let's do this. Wow, it dries so quick. Holy moly. Oof, get that lid back on. Oh, huh, wow. But yeah, I mean, that's some real gold right there. I think on the black compared to the white, really pops. All right, the last thing we're gonna try it on is this. Out of pure curiosity. Let's see what it does on wood. Oh wait, give it a little shake. Okay, here we go, last round. And then I am leaving so I can breathe again. All right. Oh yeah, definitely like this on the wood texture. Very cool. We should finish this line off real quick. There we go. Okay. Well, I would say for use on wood, looks great. Black paper, yes. White paper, a little disappointing. Huh, you are getting covered. Oof. And that is it for my video. I am so sorry if it is noisy now. I had to open all the windows to ventilate it because boy, this, Lake of Gold is, whoa, it's a lot. But anyway, 
If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more art content, and let me know in the comments below. Will you be getting any of these products? Anything intriguing to you? Anything surprising? Let me know. And I will see you next time. Bye.